This is my second year owning my house down here in the villages and there's a lot of things I found out you should be doing maintenance wise every single year or every six months. And after doing this video a year ago, you guys gave me a lot of suggestions on things to do in addition to that video. I've added them in here. This will give you a list of things to do right at the end. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Rusty Nelson and welcome. This is gonna be kind of a fun video and I've already done this uh, same type of video last year after a year of owning my house. And basically I call this filter day. And what it's about is all the things that we probably should be doing every six months to a year if you own a home. Now this would apply to especially people that are moving down to the villages, people that already live here in the villages, or actually anybody that owns a home, a lot of these are going to apply to you. And some of them, I promise, you've never seen them before. You didn't even know they existed. Disclaimer, I am not a professional at all. These are just things that I'm learning. And some of them I have gotten from your suggestions and comments down below of things you do each year. So it turned out to be a, a great learning experience. Now, what I've done is, as long as the parts of the video that uh, last year's video had applied, I'm going ahead and just using those. And I've added a bunch of stuff, changed some things to your suggestions. And when I realized after I started doing it, I realized it actually started getting kind of long. So what I did this year is I divided it up into two parts. Basically, outdoors, and we're gonna cover everywhere from sprinklers to HVAC to vehicles to filters and vacuums and all types of things that are outside, basically, of the house and things you may wanna think of that you should be doing each year. And like I said, I kinda of lop off a whole day and pretty much I can get most of it all done in well, a lot less than a day, but if you just have a list, which this will give you by the end of it, you just kind of plow through these. And then the second part of this, so make sure you subscribe, will be a lot of the things that are indoor. And there's gonna be things in there that you probably have never seen, like some hidden away filters in your microwave, or your dishwasher, your washing machine, all types of things like that, anywhere from a toothbrush to filters in the dishwasher. And I'm gonna go over all those things. So what you should have at the end of this is a good list. And where applicable, I'll kind of tell you, maybe you should think about this every six months instead of a year, or maybe just like wait for a year, or sometimes even two years. And what we'll do right now is we'll start on outside and it'll actually start with a video that I did last year from inside. And then you'll see I'll either be in a different shirt or different glasses or something like that. And we'll go ahead and plow through these. Now I'll go through them pretty fast, but you can um, kind of do them yourselves. And I'll give you some suggestions or things that I've thought of. And once again, remember, I am not a professional, so you probably need to do your own research you need to find your own models, but a lot of these things will apply to all of the things in your house or your new house or the house you're thinking about getting. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with one of the ones and start with what I did started with last year, and that was starting with the HVAC. As I've said, let me put a clarifier on this. As I've said many times, I am not a professional in any of these areas, so don't listen to me. Do, go do your investigation yourself. But are, these are some of the things that I've learned so far. And really what I'm gonna do is start right here in where the air handler is, and we're gonna talk about the filters in there and flushing your system out. And this is something that's, depending on what it is, suggested to do every six months to a year. First thing we're gonna be concerned with is the filter. Now, if you look, I'm going to, whoops, there we go. Um, unhook these, you really wanna make sure that both of these latches are latched. And you wanna look behind down in here, all the way up along here, and you wanna make sure 
that this is completely sealed. Also, up right up in this area here where this goes through, when they originally did, in fact, you can see it kind of pulling away from there, we had to go back in and real re reseal that. Now, I'll tell you the reason why. If you open up your doors and you see a lot of water around here during the summer, the problem was is there was no seal here when they put this together and they had to put a new seal along here. And as soon as they did that, put that seal around there, I stopped getting water all back in here and back behind there and on this side. And basically what it was, was condensation. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put some warm water into the condensation line. And that is done right here. There's a place for um, owners to go ahead and fill this. And what I do is I take some, uh, a funnel like this and you put uh, about a gallon or so of warm water down there. Um, some say hot, some say warm, but what I was told by the Munns guy is not to use Clorox and not to use, people use vinegar, because he said what happens is if it gets really cold or that cold water hits the vinegar, it tends to turn into like jello type stuff and that can end up clogging your condensation line. And we're gonna go outside in a second and look at the outside of the air conditioner unit out there and I'll show you some things you may wanna check there. But what we also wanna check too and change, you can see every time I put a new filter up here, I put a date up there. And that was the last time that I changed this was September 1. And actually I do it every six months or check it every six months at least. And the I talked to the Munns guy and he was here today and he said six months to a year. And I'll tell you something that yeah, you may want to think about when you do this. Now, to get to it, you just pull this out like this, make sure the unit's off, and then slide the filter out. Now you can see in this unit, this is a pretty big filter. And if you look on here, there's what's called a MERV rating. And to keep this really simple, this is how small or how large a particle the filter itself will take out. If you look at, for this is a carrier unit right here, if you look at the instructions, it says either a MERV 8 or a MERV 11. Now, I think for the normal person, the 8 or 11 is kind of what they suggest, but this time what I did was I got these filters on Amazon, I'll put the link in Amazon, and it's a company called Filter Buy, and they make some something like 18 zillion different types of filters. And you wanna make sure that you have the correct size. So this is 1920 by four and a quarter, and this is 19 and an eighth, 19, 1920 by four, four, and then there's actually an actual size. So these, the, these filters are within a 16th of an inch of this. Also wanna take a look at the filter. You can look at one side and look at the other, make sure there's not any really big contaminants in there to make sure that you don't have any problems. Now I'm just gonna put this filter back in and you'll see how easy this is. This is the filter I just showed you that's in the box. And if you notice, there's a couple of things. On this side, I put the date on there. And then I also put the new date up on, on a little piece of blue tape to remind me. Because the date that I put on this filter is pretty much the date that kind of kicks off my quote filter day. You also need to take a look at these arrows right here, and you need to make sure that they point in the way the airflow goes. Now for this handler, the air comes here and goes up and is pulled up through the house. So you wanna take this, and sometimes they're a little tight, and go ahead, and there's a little lip inside there, go ahead and push that in, and make sure it's snug and it should fit really good. And then there's two little tiny hooks right on the bottom right here and you make sure they go in the slots right there. Now when you put this in, go ahead and make sure that you kind of look around or I look around to make sure there's no bunch of water in there or anything leaking. And put those two little clips down in the slot and then close this and make sure it's, oh, that, didn't go, that didn't go well. 
<laughs> make sure it's sealed on there and then make sure you put your cap when you're done back on your uh, drain there when you get done flushing that out. And so that's it for in here. Now we can go ahead and go outside and uh, take a look at the outside part of the unit. Right down here you will see this pipe that goes right here and you'll see right now you can probably see water dripping out of it. What you want to check for, that's normal just to have a little bit dripping out of there. But what you want to check for when you put the warm water into the um, tube back there, the white tube we looked at with the, the uh, cap on there, you want to see water come out of this. And the reason is what you're doing is you're checking to make sure that's clear and you're kind of flushing that out. And I think they say in the, in the manual from the villages or Munns or whatever to do that once every six months. And I think it says, quote, it's even better if you do it every three months. Since I have a fairly new home, I closed on my house in August. There's not a whole lot to check out here. Basically what I do is kind of just open this up, make sure there's nothing in there in the shutoff, and then come out and check this part of the pan, make sure there's nothing living in there, make sure there's nothing that's crawled up here. The other day I had a, a frog that got stuck down there. And then also, I hope you can see it, right down there there's a, like little black holes. You wanna make sure that that pan right down there is open and the water is actually draining out because there's a lot of condensation that takes place when this is cranking with the air conditioner. A couple of new things I've learned since last year, things that I've done, is one, it says, believe it or not, and I never knew this, but it says in the manual for the HVAC part of this, this top part right here, it actually says that once a year, you should put um, car wax on the top of it. I guess that's to keep the, you know, because the sun pounds on it all the time. The other thing is, is that after reading and talking to my cousin, who's actually involved in the HVAC business, get in the shade here a little bit, it's kind of hot out there. It's actually involved in the HVAC business. He says one of the most common things that goes wrong with the unit itself is what's called a capacitor, and it's a start-run capacitor that's in these units. Now, that part is about, I think I spent 13 bucks, so I ordered one of these, and I'm not gonna show you how to do it, but I'm just telling you that I ordered one, and in case that blows for 13 bucks, if it's in the middle of the winter or a thunderstorm or something like that, I have one here, and I can actually go out and change it. For 13 bucks, it's a good, piece of insurance. And that actually goes right into this area right here. It's right behind this panel. And there's some certain things that, that you actually have to do. You kind of need to know what you're doing. But uh, I figured for myself it was a good idea to have that on hand. Now, that's about it for the HVAC system. One other thing is, as most of you know, a lot of us have uh, you know, lightning is a big thing around here. And many people have had surge protectors put on, and there are some that you can have put on by your electric company. And that is kind of right here with me. And if you take a look, I don't know whether you can see it, but I just go by and check and make sure that little light is red. And we're actually going to talk about surge protectors kind of indoors. I'm gonna show you what you need to check with those because they just don't last forever, so there's some things you actually have to check. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the um, hot water heater. Now, I did a video on expansion tanks, so if you have a hot water heater, there's certain maintenance things that you have to do. I do not have one here, but I had a friend that had one and I actually did a video I will link to it down below that tells you, shows you how you need to check your expansion tank. And you may want to reference that. But what I'm going to do is show you the tankless water heaters. And there's two things that this year I need to do. So let's go check that out. This, if you don't know what it is or you don't have one, this is a tankless water heater and this runs off of gas. So what I'm actually going to do is change the filter and I'll show you how to do that. 
And the other thing that I need to do, since it's been two years, I'm going to descale it. In other words, I am going to run vinegar through this system. And I will make uh, down the road, so make sure you're subscribed, I will make a separate video on how to do that. Now, to buy the equipment, you can buy the package. I will put a um, link down below on Amazon. There's actually a package you can buy with a pump and everything. And there's videos on YouTube. There's a ton of them for pretty much this exact machine. And you can follow those if you want. Or you can actually call somebody to do it. And it should cost you anywhere from, I've seen it as low as 50 bucks by somebody that was doing it for people. And they donated the money to charity up to 100 bucks and maybe 120 bucks if you have one of the big commercial guys do it. But let me show you exactly how I change or inspect the filter in this. And then later on, I will link when I do the video of the descaling, I will actually uh, put a link down below. The thing is about having somebody else do it, after you do it for the first time, look and see. They say you should do it like every year or so. Take a look and see how much scaling and how dirty the water is. And you're going to be able to tell whether you have to do that every year or maybe every two years. I don't run mine a whole lot, so probably every two years is going to be just fine. But we'll find out when I do it. Getting a little windy out here. Let's change this filter out. Big reason you want to do this is, especially when you just have a new house, you want to take a look at this thing and see how much sediment's in it or whether it's clogged up. If it's clogged up, Obviously, it's going to deplete your water pressure going into the house. Two things you want to do, you want to turn the unit off. If you have an indoor unit where it's like inside your garage and it's just plugged into the wall, you can unplug the wall. Or what you can do is you can come over and turn off the unit right here. All right, so that turns the unit off there. And then also I'm just going to come over here, water heater right here, and just turn that off. So we actually turned it off in two different places. Now we go outside, it's gonna look a little complicated, but trust me, this is a really easy thing to do. Let's go back outside. This is the cold water in, and it goes up into the unit. This is the filter we're talking about right here. And then the hot water comes out here. This main one controls the hot water coming out into the house. This big one back here controls the water, the big valve, water going into the hot water heater. These two right here, I'll end up using when it comes time to do descaling, which I'm gonna do another video of. Now, one thing that people don't talk about that much, especially being outdoors, I'm not worried about this. You can see I already tested this, but this is a pressure relief valve, and you also have these on water heaters with the tank. So if you have an overpressure, you can see you just pull this up just a little bit, right? And water's gonna come out, out the bottom. So basically, we're just draining that. And especially since it's outdoors, I wanna make sure that there's nothing stuck up in there because that really doesn't get used. You wanna make sure that can drain. The big thing is, is you wanna make sure you realize that this is plastic. So you got plastic against brass and nothing gets done very tight because you don't want to crack that off with the plastic in the, in, the, in the brass there. What we're going to do, it's pretty simple. You just first turn off the main valve that goes into the unit, right? So you're stopping the water to come in. Then we're going to turn off the um, water back into the house, and then I am going to hit this. And that just shows we got no pressure in there. What I did the first time I did this was I actually forgot to hit the relief valve to make sure there was no pressure in there. But that's it. And now we're gonna take off the little cap in there and take a look at the filter. There's a little plastic strap that's on the back of here that pops off like that. You may want to hit the pressure thing one more time. I got a little wet. 
I came back inside just so I could show this to you. This actually pops off like this. That's all it really is, and it pops back on. You can buy these, I don't know, they're pretty cheap. So if yours is kind of messed up, you may want to buy another one, but I'm just gonna take and blow this out. And that's it, ready to go back in. But I'm just gonna replace this and go back in here. Went back and got a little smaller pair of pliers. See whether I can make this work a little easier. Probably turned it a quarter of a turn and that's it. So I'm gonna turn back on the water pressure. Now you wanna do this slow. And the reason I say that is because you don't, just don't want a, a big rush of water pressure to fire up right into this. And you wanna, I dried this off beforehand just to make sure so we could look at it, make sure there was no leak. Now what I did was I turned the cold water back on because that's the only thing we turned on. And now I'm going to, we haven't turned on power yet. I'm going to turn on the hot water. I kind of want to make sure that water is flowing through it, which it is. And I want to make sure that all the air is out of, or if there's any air in the hot water heater. I am going to turn on the circuit breaker and then come over and turn the unit on. I'm gonna go out and take one more look and make sure we're not leaking at all. And so we have the cold water we turned on and that was pretty much it. We tested overpressure valve and now I'm just gonna go in and see whether I got hot water, hopefully. And we do, we got nice hot water and that's cleaned out. Like I said, I'll put a link when I do the descaling, I'll put that down below or you can just hire somebody for under a hundred bucks, I'm sure, and they'll be happy to do it. Let's get on to, well, let's go out and take a look at the golf cart. Two things I check on the golf cart. One is the tire pressure, and I put that generally around 20 because once I get outside, it gets pretty hot and expands, and I think the manual says that you want it around 22 PSI, but you need to check because all golf carts are different. They got different tires, but for me, that's just about it. Next thing is the oil, and I'll show you that really quick. Now, obviously, all golf carts are different. This is a 22 Yamaha, and it is fairly easy to check. I'll show you how easy this is. Just pull the seat up, and you can use the armrest if you have one to check this, and then I'll get you in closer here. Now, when you look in here and you're going to check the oil, the biggest thing is, is you have these two belts right here. You want to make sure that you do not get any of the oil on the belts. Just take this out, pull it straight up, and stick this underneath. And what you're looking for is if you see those hatch marks right there, that's where you want the oil to be between those two marks. You definitely don't want it over max. So make sure you don't have that. Go ahead and clean it off. And I don't use my golf cart that much, so I don't have that. You need to check uh, air filter out. You can do that, but I'm nowhere near checking that out. And that's it for the golf cart. Now, the next thing is right over here, and I probably don't need to do it, is my avalanche, and I check the tire pressure on there, and I check the oil and that kind of takes care of the vehicles. On to the next thing. While you're over next to the golf cart, you might as well check your garage doors. Now, if you remember, I did a video on oiling the garage doors, and it's a little bit of a noise, but you wanna just make sure there's not any, a lot of creaking. It should be that quiet. Make sure your chain is not bouncing along there, and that should be about it. I'll put the link down to oiling the garage door down below, but there's a couple of other things that are outside that I generally take a look at, kind of force myself to look at. Other things you can look at, and I don't live near a lot of trees and debris, so it's not a big deal to me, but check, make sure you don't need to clean out your gutters at all. And what I have seen people do, which is kind of cool, you get your phone, instead of climbing up on a ladder, get your phone and put it on a, a little holder, you know, that has like five, six feet, they're getting for 10 bucks on Amazon, and then just take it up, take a look at your gutters that way. Also what I do is, especially since we're going into hurricane season, I'll come back and take a look up on your roof and kind of look along the lines 
and make sure you don't have any shingles missing. That's kind of important because right now it's June and we are moving into the rainy season. All right, next thing I'm gonna show you is on the windows and you wanna make sure you do this when, uh, before, especially before the rainy season. But I, so I do it once a year and this is about the time. But in the windows, there are these areas right here and the water, now this is this type of window, but there's a hole right here, I can stick my finger in it. You just wanna make sure these gutters are clear and then I will show you the part outside that you wanna check. You wanna make sure these little scuppers don't have anything underneath there. Now, what I do is I usually take the hose and I drain those off or wash those off, wash underneath there, but I'll show you where they are and what I'm talking about. I'm gonna to try to show this to you and the builder is actually the one that showed this to me, but there's little kind of like scuppers and hopefully I can see this. And actually this one I found out, hopefully you can see this. See this little thing right here? It's kind of like a vent to let water out. And this one was actually sealed shut. You can see it has, um, but you wanna make sure that there's nothing in there holding those back. Now, they are plastic, so don't, don't go crazy on them. And I'll show you this one over here. Hopefully we can see this. But there's this little vent right there, and this one's actually closed too. And how do you like that? There's actually caulking on that one. So hopefully you can see that now, now it opens. But if those are actually closed like those were, now I don't have to worry about too much because there's water here. But I did check the other ones on the outside, especially where the water, uh, the wind gets up against, the water gets up against those. And they're free, but a lot of times you'll get bugs stuck in there and debris caught in there. But you wanna make sure they're open because if they're not open, Guess where that water's going? It's going back over and going and find any crack it can. And the builder told me that's where they end up with a lot of problems with leakage around the windows when those are clogged. And speaking of water, we're gonna do some of the water that we can actually control. And that is the sprinkler system. I just did a video on the chinch bug and uh, I'll put the link here, I'll put the picture up here and put the link down below. It's kind of important that you watch this because there's a couple of people even just in my neighborhood that had their whole lawn replaced because they didn't keep up with the chinch bug. Well, one of the problems with the chinch bug is that they thrive when a lawn becomes distressed. In other words, along the edges where you, like the, the, your grass is starting to get dry. And this video talks about it, so I'll put the link. I highly suggest you watch it, especially if you have fescue because they love it. So. Here we go. We are going to talk about a, just a couple of things that you can check really quick to uh, work with your sprinklers. Now, I have, as many of the people have, a hunter system, which is this right here. And I have also added on the Wi-Fi, which is called a wand. It's called the wand. I will put I'll show you a picture of it here, and I will put a link to this down below. You can get it on Amazon. When I purchased it, I purchased it through the installer that was here, and it was pretty cheap. It was 75 bucks. I think it's about 100. They're running about 130 right now, so that's, that's about what they are. But really cool part about this is the app looks something like this, and then this covers each one of my zones and I am actually able to turn it on and off and also monitor it. So I can go back and see, especially when I'm away for a while, I can see whether it's actually going off. So if there's a problem, I can call one of my neighbors and say, hey, I'm disconnected, can you go up and set it up? And if this doesn't, if this isn't on there, it will actually, um, it'll let me know. So the big thing with this is, and it'll forecast the weather. Now with this app, it also works with the system and looks at the forecast. So if it looks like it's going to be raining for five days, it'll shut the sprinkler system down. So it'll say, you know, we, we don't need this because in, tomorrow it's going to rain. So it can save you money and it's pretty convenient. I like it a lot and uh, I, I would definitely recommend it. But what I'm going to show you right now is how to turn it on and off 
because what we're gonna go do is look at each one of the zones. We're not gonna do anything fancy, this is really easy. We're just gonna go look at the sprinkler heads and make sure they're working. And when we go in the back, I'll show you how I have two different sprinkler heads and I have to have one of those replaced and I'll show you that really quick because right after we take a look at the sprinkler heads and what we're looking for, we're going to take a filter out. I'm gonna show you how easy that is and kind of wash it out and just take a look at it and flush the system a little bit. So here we go. I'll show you how to turn this on manually and most of the systems are close to it. But like I said, this is a hunter system. And here it is right here. And this is the X2. And because it's Wi-Fi, it's saying that it's online. But if you want to turn it on manually, first you turn it over to manual. And you'll see A1, that's the zone. And since it's in manual, it goes to what it was set at originally, which is 30 minutes. Now on the Wi-Fi system, I don't have it set up like that. I actually run it for two 10 minute sessions twice a week at um, five and six in the morning. And just in case you wanna know, everybody should have these which say what days of the week you're supposed to water and so on and so on, you're supposed to water Allowable start time is 4 p.m. The reason is, is because your neighbor, it won't have everybody watering the lawn at the same time. So what, remember what we did is we went from run, which is what I was originally in. We went to manual, which kicks off. Um, if you have your Wi-Fi, it also kicks that off. It's going to say one, right? And if you want to go to the next section, you hit two or three, and then Take a look outside and you'll see that it comes on. Now, there's some certain things that I'm looking for when I'm outside and I'll show those to you now. It is a little windy out here. I changed over the mic, so hopefully that'll help a little bit. But basically what I'm doing is going through each zone and I'll try to block this the mic a little bit. And I'm just checking to make sure that these look fairly even, right? Which this does. And if you come by each one of these, you can see, oops, getting a little wet. So you figure you might as well get wet here. And just making sure there's a good even flow coming out of these. And as you can see, there really is. This is really good right here. Now, this is an adjustable head. So if you have to adjust the head, you can just turn this and it widens it. And this brings it back. So you want to make sure that it's covering the proper area. Each one of these is covering the right area. Now, if you look at this one right here, this is not. And I am going to get soaking wet doing this, but for you guys, I'll do this. And basically what we want to do is just change this and widen it. And if you have to, you can turn this whole thing right here, turn it to the right, and uh, you'll hear some like clicking in there, but that's the, that's the way you change them or way you change the whole thing if it's not an adjustable. Sometimes you have to watch that your bushes don't start to um, encroach on the sprinklers. So some of these sprinklers may be behind these bushes right here and you wanna make sure that it's kind of like not encroaching on it as your butchers grow. Now let's go in the back. I'll show you the one in the back that I have to replace and I'll show you what the uh, little filter looks like that we want to check. Because if you see an erratic spray in there, you definitely want to check these um, uh, filters. That's it. Hopefully I didn't get any water on the lens. <laughs> All right, so we are in the backyard and I am actually going to use my app to turn on the sprinklers. And now that I'm back here, now, a few people that have folks that have dogs, you folks that have dogs, people are always asking questions about dogs. And you wanna wonder whether this is dog friendly. It is dog friendly, except for when you have neighbors like this that just constantly leave their dogs barking. So you get to listen to it with me for a little while. Anyway, once again, back here, we're checking to make sure that all of the areas are covered. 
And as I go through here, you can see there's an area that's a little lighter right there. So it's actually not in the best of shape. It's okay, but not the best of shape. But the problem is, for some reason, when they installed this, they put this type of sprinkler head in here. Now, this covers really well, but unfortunately, it doesn't have the same rate as these other sprinkler heads over here. And so what I need to do is just change the head and this one will inspect the filter. Now the difference in the filters are, you'll see in a second, that this is actually connected to the sprinkler head itself on this one. But the new ones, they're actually separate, like this. And that's what we want to check. I'm going to show you something else. That's this tool right here that I have. You don't have to have one of these tools. Some people say you can use vice grips. The problem with the vice grips is if you put those on too tight and they grasp really hard around the pipe that comes up out of the pop-up sprinkler heads and you damage the side of that, then it tends to scuff up the seals around the edge and they start leaking. But let's get a little closer to this one. And first I'll show you what we're going to do is just take this clamp and we just put it at the base of this and then hopefully when we turn this off it'll hold that sprinkler head up and the dog starts barking stops barking jeez see this is it this is why people don't like dogs in some places so as you can see this holds this up and then I can actually turn this one off by hand. And this has definitely got a lot of gunk in it. Hopefully you can see that. If you look on the top of these, there's some markings and these are actually adjustable. So you can open these up and close them so you can control the spray. Now I'm gonna take this, drop this on here that should be right, hopefully, and we'll turn it on and check it out. Perfect. Now, if once this is set, if you need to adjust it to the right, just take it and spin it a little bit, and that's fine. And as you can see, these are adjustable, so you can control exactly where they're aimed. And that looks really good. Now, if you were actually going to not change the head out, which you saw was pretty simple, you'd actually take this and you could clean that out, rinse it out, usually just with water. Um, I have that compressed air and that works fine. So we're pretty much done with this and sprinklers are done. Just a couple more things to talk about and then you get to start your sprinkler filter day. That was certainly a long list of items, but I hope it gave you a good idea of the things you have to do. And remember, this is just part one of a two-part series. And I really appreciate the comments that you guys gave me after the one last year because I got to add them in this year. Make sure you're subscribed for part two. Also, remember that you can go ahead and scroll through the bottom and the chapters will come up. Or if you're on your desktop or PC or whatever, you can go ahead and look at the chapters in the discussion down below and you'll be able to do that. Also, at the very end of this, I will just put up a still shot of a list of the things that I covered so you can take a picture of it on your phone and make a list of it. Anyway, thanks a lot for subscribing. Thanks for stopping in. And as always, I'll be really happy to see you down here in the villages. Or if not, I'll see you back here on YouTube. Have a wonderful day.